Joining us in the studio for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Eric Goldberg, Associate Professor of Medicine at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and Director of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. We want to focus on the pancreas, which is an organ that maybe most people aren't even familiar with. Where is it? What does it do? The uh, pancreas is a gland, uh, so it, uh, it secretes um, uh, hormones. Uh, the biggest hormone that the pancreas uh, secretes is insulin. And uh, insulin is very important for regulating your body's blood sugar. So if you don't have insulin, uh, you can get diabetes. Uh, and so pancreas plays a very vital role in that. Uh, the pancreas also plays a vital role with digestion. Uh, and so when we eat, we have to secrete uh, digestive juices to help break down proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and the pancreas uh, releases a lot of these enzymes into the digestive juices. When, when somebody has diabetes, does that mean that there's something wrong with their pancreas, or is there another set of factors? Um, I'm certainly not an expert on diabetes, but what I can tell you is that um, certain types of diabetes are because of no, uh, the, the body has an immune reaction against uh, insulin. Uh, and then other types, the body becomes resistant to the effects of insulin. And so if you didn't have a pancreas, you don't have insulin and you can develop uh, diabetes. Or if you have some type of scarring condition in the pancreas, it's going to lead to diabetes. People do get pancreatitis, which is an inflammation of the pancreas? That's correct. Why does that happen? Uh, there's a couple different types of pancreatitis and they have different uh, causes. Uh, there's an acute pancreatitis where uh, patients can get acutely very, very ill very quickly and develop life-threatening disease. And then there's a chronic pancreatitis where um, there's kind of months and years of uh, pancreatic injury where the pancreas becomes damaged and scarred. And once it becomes scarred, it doesn't work as well. And so somebody who has acute pancreatitis, it's typically, um, in this country, it's related to either a gallstone uh, that has passed out of the gallbladder, down the bile duct, and at the end of the bile duct, the bile duct and the pancreatic duct meet, and then it blocks it up and can lead to a cascade of events that will inflame the pancreas. Uh, and the other major cause of um, acute pancreatitis in this country is uh, alcohol consumption, uh, which is a direct toxin to the pancreas. How, how can these cases be treated? Uh, it depends. So for acute pancreatitis, if um, somebody develops um, uh, life-threatening illness, the important thing is to kind of get them through that illness. You have to rest the pancreas. Think of the pancreas as um, it's a digestive organ and it's releasing digestive juices. And these juices are designed to break down meat. Uh, it's designed to break down sugars. It's designed to break down fat. Uh, the same things that our bodies are composed of. And if these enzymes are getting out and digesting the pancreas itself, it becomes a very painful uh, unpleasant situation to be in, and it can trigger a lot of inflammatory processes in the body. So the first step is to really rest the pancreas, and we do this by not letting the patients eat, uh, and that uh, will hopefully calm the pancreas down. And while they can't eat, you have to make sure they're getting fluid uh, and nutrition, and so uh, supportive care is the, the mainstay of treatment. And then uh, also getting to an underlying cause. If it's a gallstone that's blocking up the duct, you have to get the gallstone out of the, um, out of the bile duct. And we mentioned you were the head of uh, endoscopy. Is that something that can be done with a scope as opposed to at surgery? Uh, it's something that used to be done almost exclusively surgically until about 1980. Uh, and then things uh, began switching over to less invasive means. And actually a, very, a much safer way of doing it is by an endoscopic technique called ERCP, uh, where our scope is put down the mouth uh, down into the intestines right where the bile duct opens up uh, and from there we can insert catheters up into the bile duct and ex uh, extract stones out. Hey, what, what are the symptoms? How, how does somebody know that they're developing a problem and, and would a patient be able to guess it was the pancreas as opposed to something else uh, you know in that general area? Yeah so the main symptom of pancreatitis is pain uh, and this is generally a pretty severe pain that's going to send someone to the hospital. It's not like a mild ache. It's a pretty severe pain that's in the epigastrin, which is the upper portion of your abdomen, and it penetrates into the back. Uh, other symptoms that we see are uh, nausea and vomiting. Uh, and uh, when it's severe, uh, then uh, patients can develop signs of um, organ failure. They start 
uh, getting problems with their breathing. They start having problems with their kidneys functioning uh, because the pancreas uh, sets off an inflammatory cascade that will disrupt a lot of different organs' functions. Let's take a phone call for you. This is Fred in Baltimore County. Fred, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Uh, my question is, I was uh, many years ago taken to uh, the hospital with diabetes symptoms, I mean uh, gallbladder symptoms, and then when they determined that I had gall sand in my bile duct rather than stones, then they discovered I had pancreatitis and they couldn't do anything and that my pancreas healed. So after a couple of weeks, the pancreas recovered. And then they went in and removed my gallbladder and discovered it was like a piece of leather, hadn't functioned for years. But my question is, I have no evidence. My, my diabetes was discovered by my family doctor. He was treating me for depression, and then I went in for a visit, and he asked about the history of diabetes in my family and checked my urine sugar, and that was high, and sent me for a glucose tolerance test. Fred, confirming I was diabetic. But my question is, I had no evidence that the hospital, once my pancreas had problems, that they checked me for any evidence of diabetes. Very good. And that Fred, would have seemed to have been such a simple test. Fred, thank you so much for the phone call. Any yeah. thoughts? Yeah, so um, certainly it sounds like Fred had acute gallstone pancreatitis. So even though he didn't have a stone, he had some what we call sludge. And effectively, that's the same thing as having a stone in your bile duct because it'll travel out of the gallbladder. It'll go down, lodge at the end of the bile duct uh, and block up the um, pancreatic duct as well. Uh, and there, people get acute pancreatitis. And the nice thing about acute pancreatitis, if there is a nice thing to say, because it, it's a, like Didn't I said, sound a, like it so far. no, it's yeah. a very painful condition. But once patients recover from an acute bout of pancreatitis, uh, in, uh, they generally recover completely. There are s exceptions to that rule when someone has necrosis or destruction of their gland. Uh, but in general, people will recover complete function from, his, from their acute gallstone pancreatitis. And so the development of diabetes 10, 20 years later after an episode, it's probably unrelated to that single episode of pancreatitis. Is there an age, in just a few seconds, is there an age where, where pancreatitis tends to occur? I think because gallstones and alcohol consumption are the main causes, um, it's, it's uncommon to see you know, gallstone in a 10-year-old. It's much more common to see it in someone over the age of 40. Similarly, you're not going to have a 10-year-old who's a, an alcoholic. Um, and, and it takes many years of alcohol consumption to damage the pancreas. Very so good. you typically see it after the age of 30. Um, we got to leave exceptions. it there. Dr. Goldberg, Eric Goldberg, University of Maryland, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System. 